In this module of Assessa U, we will look at an overview of fibroid pathology. Fibroids are known by many names. They are the most common pelvic tumor in women. The exact cause of uterine fibroids is unclear. When symptomatic, they can affect a woman's quality of life. Common complaints include heavy bleeding, pain, and pressure symptoms. Up to 70% of women have fibroids by the age of 50. 7 million women in the United States have debilitating symptoms. Roughly 2 million seek treatment, but only 300,000 procedures are done each year. 1.8 million women are unsatisfied with current treatment options. Many women who seek treatment complain of painful or heavy periods. If fibroids are large enough, they may push on surrounding anatomy, including the bladder and rectum. They may experience urinary frequency, constipation, and increased abdominal girth. Subserosal fibroids are the most common type of fibroid. They are found on the outer uterine wall and are the cause of the bulk symptoms such as pain and pressure. Intramural fibroids are the next most common. They are within the uterine wall, creating heavy menstrual bleeding as well as pressure and bulk symptoms. Many women that present with heavy menstrual bleeding have intramural fibroids with or without the presence of submucosal fibroids. Submucosal fibroids found in the lining of the uterine cavity are the least common type of uterine fibroid. They can cause heavy, prolonged bleeding and infertility. These represent only about 5% of uterine fibroids. A small amount of fibroids are categorized as pedunculated. These fibroids are attached to the uterus by a stalk, either within the uterine cavity, as pedunculated submucosal, or on the outside of the uterus, as a pedunculated subserosal. Fibroids are typically classified type 0 through 8 using the FIGO, or International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, classification system depending on location within the uterus. Here is another image of fibroids in various locations throughout the uterus. Fibroids grow in a predictable fashion, although growth rates are dependent on each individual fibroid's genetic makeup. They grow from the outside out, therefore ablation of the periphery is important. Changes in fibroids post-ablation include decreases in size and volume. Even a small change in volume can have a significant effect on the patient in terms of pain and pressure. To give an idea of what decreases in volume does to the size of a fibroid, this is a chart based off of a 10 centimeter fibroid. For example, going from 10 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters is a 57.8% reduction in volume. Going from a 10 centimeter fibroid to a 4.5 centimeter size is a 90.9% reduction in volume.